Well, welcome in everybody. This is the first live stream on the Lawn Lover channel this season. I'm happy to be back for 2024 lawn season. Uh, we got an awesome show planned tonight with uh, Todd Zimmerman, Vice President of Product Development at Crest Tools. So looking forward to that. Um, just a little intro here. I know lawn season has began and a lot of you have uh, been watching the content, showed interest in the Crest Tools. So I figured it'd be a good idea to get a representative uh, with Cress on here, just so we could get your questions answered live. So as we go through the show here, just drop your comments and questions in the chat, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, and we will try to get those answered as we go through this. Um, this is gonna be an informal show. So the more questions we get, the better. Uh, you guys can kind of guide the discussion on that. Um, but we're really looking forward to that and answering your questions. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and, and bring Todd in here and get him on. So Todd, can you hear me all I right? I can. How are you, Justin? I am good. Uh, it's good to have you on here. I'm I'm really thankful that you had the opportunity to get on here and do this. So it's going to be an awesome experience to kind of showcase Cress to the audience and kind of give them a little more information about the company and, and what you guys have to offer. Um, so I guess we'll first start off with, uh, if you want to give a little brief introduction of yourself, uh, what you do with Cress and, and, uh, we'll go from there. Absolutely. Yeah. So I started with Cress in 2019, um, and to lead their product development group. Uh, the nice part is, is as I was coming in, we were just starting to do the research for Cress and I'll kind of circle back to, to that, but I've been in and around cordless power tools, outdoor power equipment, power tools, um, even over to the household items since 1996. So every part of my career has been either through sales or marketing, um, but always looking at something different, something new, uh, more driving towards technology and innovation to see how to change different markets or consumers' behavior. Uh, and that's what's really exciting about the Crest product uh, and what we have coming to market, because it's not it's not the typical lithium ion uh, professional battery that's out there anymore, right? Crest came to market in 2022 uh, at Equip to launch to everybody with an incredibly new battery technology to help that transition from gas to cordless. Yeah. Yeah, that was, I mean, I, I that's where I first discovered you guys because mm -hmm. I honestly I hadn't heard of Press before. So at Equip, um, kind of saw the products in person and I was, I was pretty impressed with the uh, especially the commercial line of stuff, uh, the fast charge, your battery technology, the quality of the tools. Um, it was pretty impressive compared to other stuff that I've used. Um, so that really piqued my interest, I guess, and uh, made me want to learn more about Crest and, and kind of use some of your things. So I, I guess you said Crest debuted in, in 2022. Um, I know you guys are newer to the U.S. market. Mm -hmm. Kind of, can you get, kind of give us a background on Crest in general and kind of their history? Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Outside so of the, the Crest brand or Crest started in Germany, uh, focused on innovation and power tools, right? Um, really concentrated market, but mm -hmm. it's been around since 1960. Uh, in 2010, 2012, um, our corporate company, Positech, bought the brand Crest. So, very good heritage German brand, but the reason we were looking at uh, a different brand, um, something like Cress, is to help us launch into the professional outdoor power equipment market with the independent dealers, right? So we are a new brand. Um, it's not a, it's not a new brand. It's just a brand. It's new to people here in the U.S. It's probably a better way to say it. Um, but the one thing that Crest brings yeah. to market and still has stayed tr true to its tradition is bringing innovation, right? And the best way to kind of sum that up is the battery program or battery system that Crest is bringing to professional landscapers is completely different than what's out there today, right? There's either lithium ion or lithium polymer. We have lithium ion as well. So I'm going to talk kind of both sides of the story here, mm -hmm. but- if we didn't have yeah. the technology, the battery technology, you and I wouldn't be sitting here talking, right? We simply would be just another, another no-name brand, another brand that trying to get into a market with something that's just standard, okay? And it wouldn't be any reason for anybody to really talk about us. 
So the battery technology that we brought to market has been in development for almost 12 years now, um, 10 years prior to launch. So our owner worked with a, the University of Waterloo in Canada um, to create this battery technology, right? So the chemists at the University of Waterloo have spent 10 years looking to understand which everybody's trying to do in the market right now is to reduce the resistance of a battery cell. And if you can reduce the resistance of a cell, meaning lowering the heat, you can do a lot more with it. You can get more power out. You can charge it faster. You can get more life cycles out of it. So about right when I started in 2019 is right when um, they came back and said, hey, we think we've got something different, right? So what we refer to as the eight minute cyber system consists of mm -hmm. two cyber pack batteries at the moment, right? We have a four amp hour and 11 amp hour battery. These batteries will charge from zero to 100% in 12 minutes. If that's mm -hmm. not fast enough, it will also charge in eight minutes on flash charge. So truly there is no more downtime, right? So the biggest energy hog yeah. that most cordless products programs have or manufacturers have are backpack blowers. So with our 11 amp hour battery on full speed, 35 Newtons, right? Comparable to one of the top selling gas backpack blowers out there today, 35 Newtons, you'll get 15 minutes of runtime. The advantage is I can charge that battery in 12 minutes or eight minutes. So I'm never out of power as long as I have two batteries, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So with that technology yeah. though, we also wanted to help the transition with uh, landscapers with the ability to, to handle the charging capabilities for their batteries. So we developed a cyber tank, right? The cyber tank is a DC to DC charger. It is meant to be meant to be fastened to your landscape trailer. And you use that to charge your cyber pack batteries throughout the day. So with this right now, I'll kind of recap everything all together. So the cyber pack batteries okay. are 3000 life cycles. So it's 10 times the amount of life cycles of standard lithium ion battery. Remember, we make them as well, right? They're about 300 and 350 life cycles. So 10 times the life cycles, two times more power, zero downtime and faster charging, right? Zero downtime, meaning you don't have to let the batteries cool off before you start to charge them. Any lithium ion battery needs at least 10 to 15 minutes to, to cool down to get to room temperature before it'll start to charge, right? because you have to protect those cells to allow that energy to come in, mm -hmm. heat the cell back up to charge the cell to give you full power again, right? So we focused on two things. We wanted to make sure that the transition from gas to cordless was easier. We didn't want, we wanted to address one of the concerns, which is the upfront cost of the amount of batteries you need to invest in um, mm -hmm. to get through a day, right? So you have, a battery pack that charges faster than any other battery pack that we know of, right? You have DC to DC charging mm -hmm. on your trailer. With our battery pack, it's a six year or 3000 life cycle warranty. So for any professional landscaper out there that's listening, right? You're literally buying your fuel at a price right now for the next six years, mm -hmm. right? Now we all know fuel costs are going to go right. up. Your battery cost isn't going to go up if you're buying it right now right so you start saving money from gas maintenance as soon as you start buying the crest system today now the part of the, the other part of it that was fun for me right as soon as we had this battery technology that said hey you've got two times more power go find something to make it work well that's the easy part then right we didn't want to be a cordless product we wanted to be gas so we went out and benchmarked and found the best and top selling gas products in each of the segments and developed our product, our cordless product to look, feel, perform, and act like a gas product. We just removed the engine or the combustible engine and put a battery on the back of it. Mm -hmm. Right. So wow, that's awesome. Yeah, we, yeah. we don't we don't say things like we're like cordless or like cordless. We are cordless. We don't think say <laughs> we're like gas, right? We are gas. We are a yeah. gas product. We just yeah. simply ripped, you know, the spark plugs, the fuel tank, yes. everything off of it and put a battery on the back end of it. Yeah, and all that maintenance that comes with it. Yeah, yeah, all that maintenance, the <laughs> so the fuel, the you know, if you don't mix the fuel the right way, the spark plugs, the fuel injection, the 
the air filters, air, the oil filters, everything that comes with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. So I guess one of our first questions here is, uh, is the commercial system only available for lawn tools or zero turn mowers too? Oh, I love this question. So right now it's only available for handheld tools. Um, so we've got everything okay. from uh, handheld blowers to backpack blowers, edgers, string trimmers, attachment capable. Uh, this year we've launched uh, short or pole hedge trimmers and pole saws. Um, now zero turn mowers is a great question. And we get this a lot. From a zero turn mower, there's a lot of companies that are focused going cordless, um, which is good, right? It, it will mm -hmm. help transition. The one part that zero turn mowers doesn't help address is the labor issue that's that's facing the U.S. right now, especially in the outdoor power equipment market. So we're focused on looking at robotics and what we can do to help offset the utilization of zero turn mowers, not the utilization of zero turn mm -hmm. mowers, but helping with saving labor across the market. So we're trying to address a bigger issue or a bigger challenge for our professional landscapers versus just coming out with another zero turn mower as well. Yeah. No, and I think I, I saw the robot technology that you guys had at Equip, and I think that that was a game changer in relation to the technology in its own. I believe it had the the RTK like built onto it. Yes, sir. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 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 So, so and it was it had the ability to drop various mowers at certain locations and kind of it was a it was a pretty cool setup um, from what I saw. So. Um, I really liked that. I thought that was cool. Yeah. From that aspect. Yeah. We, um, along, yeah. along with our commercial product, we also launched a full range of boundaryless or wireless uh, robotic mowers um, using RTK technology. The wonderful part about our system is you don't have to have an antenna local to your property. Um, we're building a network out across the nation. So part of that network, you can be anywhere within that network and use our robotic mowers and not have to worry about a, an antenna you know, on your house or on your property or multiple antennas to be able to, to use it across your property. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, another question here would be, um, about the cyber capsule battery. Does it have fast charging capability? Uh, the, um, so this is a Crest user. I, this is a great question. So, uh, <laughs> I'll address it. So this year, uh, on top of our cyber pack batteries, we launched two new additional batteries. Uh, the first one is our 25 okay. amp hour cyber capsule battery, which, and I will be open and honest, it is not fast charging. It is our, a standard lithium ion battery. Okay. Um, the, the benefit of it is it weighs the same as our 11 amp hour. So it's only roughly 17 pounds. The reason we, were, we brought this out is to help with fall leaf cleanup is the biggest reason. Okay. Yeah. So again, we talked about the backpack battery or the backpack blower, excuse me, the mm -hmm. backpack blower. Um, during spring cleanup or spring use, 11 amp hour, you'll be able to go for most of the day because you're not, you don't, you're not cleaning leaves or wet, damp leaves out of your lawn. When it comes to fall leaf cleanup, that's a heavy duty application. And we know we've got to be better at delivering more runtime for our professional landscapers. And that's the reason we have the cyber caps file, but it is a standard uh, lithium ion battery. So it is a longer charge. It's about an hour and 20 minute to hour and 30 minute charge, um, which is actually still faster than most of, uh, the other backpack batteries that are out there today. Uh, that's a four year warranty and a 1200 life or 1200 life cycles. Um, right. the nano pack that we have is a new technology. We're actually using a similar technology that's used on EV called tabless. Um, so that mm -hmm. is a 30 minute charge, um, looks like a standard 18650 cylindrical cell. Um, but it's got tabs going from both the anode and cathode, uh, anode and cathode to allow the resistance to be reduced across the cell to allow it to give you more runtime, more power and faster charging as well. Okay. Interesting. And as far as like a new, a new landscaping business or something wanting to try out technology like this, is there, do you guys offer any type of like trial um, for this type of equipment or how does that work um, in relation to companies branching out onto battery technology? Yeah, we do. So to... the one thing that uh, we launched the end of last year and really going hard after this year is a 10 day free trial period for professional, for landscapers, right? 
Um, our biggest thing is we want to make sure you have at least two crews. And the reason why we're asking for two crews is simple. We want one crew to simply be able to continue using gas because we want that to be the control crew, right? We want the landscapers mm. to really track during that same time period how much gas each product is using. So you know exactly what your return on investment is going to be when you switch over to cordless, right? That second crew then for 10 days, free trial, no questions asked. We want you to use cordless, take all the gas off your trailer and use the Crest handheld product. Use the blower, the string trimmer, the edger, the mower, whatever you need to get through your, your daily tasks today um, and use it for 10 days. Then you'll be able to truly compare what your cost savings is going to be for going cordless versus using gas. Right. And to be part of that, just go to your no, local Crest dealer, right? You can go to Crest.com, find the closest dealer to you um, and walk in and talk to them about the free, the Crest free trial, the 10 day free trial program. Yeah, that's awesome. I like that you guys offer that because a lot of companies, I don't know if they do that or not, but that's a nice um, option for somebody who, you know, is new to battery technology, especially from a company and nervous for trying it out. I think it's and I like the idea of the control group with the gas technology compared to the battery. So you can kind of compare time savings and, and what goes into all of that. But, yeah. And that's um, the reason we're doing it, right? The one thing that we're trying to do, mm -hmm. um, again, we, we understand it's a new brand and there's always some, um, I won't say concern, but people want to be able to know that they can trust the brand and make sure that the product works for them. So we want to take reasons away. We want to find solutions for people to say yes right? Versus saying no. Mm. And the biggest thing that we're hearing is, hey, let me try it, right? I'm going to I want to prove to myself that it's going to work for me and my crews. So we did. We listened to the professional landscapers and the dealers, you know, you know, the dealers that we talked to, their top landscapers. And that's where the idea came from, is from the professional team, right? And said, let us try it out. Okay, here's a 10-day free trial. You know, let's try it out. Let's track it the right way. And let's prove, you have to prove to yourself that it's going to be the, the best option for you. And look, as they say, proof is in the pudding, right? So we're we're making sure you have the opportunity to be able to do that for you. Yeah, no, I like that a lot. Um, I guess that takes us into the next question here. What's the best starting option and what battery choice would you recommend to start off with? I'm assuming she's, Ashray is talking about uh, the commercial line because that was the last question. So yeah. So, you want to speak to that? yeah, so this is going to depend on how many uh, people are in a crew. So if you have a two-man crew, uh, two person crew or three person crew or higher, um, or if you're just a single person doing uh, lawn work. So I'll kind of go through each of the options. Okay. So okay. if you're a two person crew, we recommend our KAC 875L, which is our five kilowatt cyber tank, four of uh, and four batteries. So it'll be two 11 amp hour cyber pack and two four amp hour cyber pack, and then the product that you need. So let's call it a string trimmer an edger, um, a blower, backpack blower, obviously, um, a hedge trimmer, mostly a pole hedge trimmer, depending on where you are, uh, and then a 21-inch mower, right, as a secondary mower, not a primary mower, because most time the question came up for the mm -hmm. ZTR, right? Mostly the 21-inch is going to be a, yep. a secondary mower where you can't get the ZTR through the, the gate for mowing, right, or smaller properties, okay? Um, if you're a mm -hmm. three-person crew or higher, then we jump up to – the KAC 877L, which is a 7.2 kilowatt cyber tank. All right. <clears throat> and then you just double up on your product. So at this point, it would be two string trimmers, an edger, probably two backpack blowers, uh, a pole hedge trimmer, uh, and then the mower as well. So as you go up in the number of products you need, then you just add one more battery at the 11 amp hour, or the, the four amp hour. So the three person crew or higher, we basically start you off with three 11 amp hour and three four amp hour batteries. All right. If you're a six person crew, then you're probably going to go up to, you know, five of the 11 amp hour, five of the four amp hour. And essentially all we're trying to do is to make sure you always have one battery using and one battery charging. All right. Um, okay. Now, if you're a single and it looks like. Yeah, there you go. Oh, go ahead. Yep. Yeah. So it looks like on your website here, I'm just looking. Um, it kind of goes over this, too, for somebody who's interested. Um this is what it looks like you're talking about here, where you can kind of kind of learn what it might take based on your outfit or your your company setup. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's a, that's a pretty helpful tool, too. The um, the other part that actually helps as well. So if you're a let's call it one or two person crew. Right. And you're 
you've got a few yards that you're taking care of and, and few could mean, you know, five to six or 12 yards that you're taking care of on the weekends um, or during the week. We have another mm -hmm. option as well, right? So we mentioned the cyber capsule before. So it's our 25 amp hour battery pack. Mm -hmm. If you pair that with what we're calling our cyber tank light, you can buy the cyber tank light. The 25 amp hour battery actually becomes your power source to charge your smaller four amp hour batteries. Okay. So yeah, if you keep scrolling okay. down, here comes the cyber tank light, right? Mm -hmm. So you have your 25 amp hour battery, your cyber tank light, and it's meant to charge your four amp hour batteries. So at this point, what you would end up doing to get into it is you'd buy basically two or three of the cyber tank or uh, cyber capsules, the cyber tank light, the product that you want to use with it. And then to charge the batteries overnight, you would simply buy the 30 amp charger, right? The 30 amp charger will charge the batteries that you have in 12 minutes or uh, an hour and a half, but you'll be able to manage that fairly well at the end of the day to get everything back up and running for the next day, right? And then it just depends on what product you have. Again, string trimmer, edger, pole hedge trimmer, mower, and backpack blower, of course. I keep forgetting that one, but everybody always tends to have a backpack blower in their trailer. Right. <laughs> A helpful tool right <laughs> um yeah so i guess i guess transitioning here to kind of um cater to the other side so the the prosumer line so basically you guys have the commercial line of batteries and equipment but then you also have the prosumer line and i've been t trying out some of the prosumer stuff i got last week um i guess can you speak to the difference between the commercial line and the prosumer line um for those interested in that as well absolutely yeah so we do we have a a it's the nice part about being a single platform. So our 60 volt platform, whether it's commercial or prosumer, those batteries fit anything that are Crest 60 volt. All right. Mm -hmm. Our Crest commercial product is designed to be at the durability and quality level for professional landscapers, right? It's tested to their standards um, to make sure it's going to work and survive their demanding environment. All right. The prosumer line is a great line, but it's developed for someone like me right? To take care of yeah. my yard, a little yeah. bit larger property. Um, I want more power, but I know I'm not a professional landscaper, right? But I, I want the power mm -hmm. and the runtime for that. So we have a full line of prosumer product from string trimmers uh, to mowers to chainsaws. Um, so anything that you need around the house, uh, even snow blowers or snow throwers that were launched uh, last year uh, under the 60-volt pros prosumer brand. And then we've got the batteries to support it. So a 2.5 amp hour lithium ion battery, five amp hour lithium ion battery, and then the chargers to go with it. So great line of, of 60 volt product all the way across the board. Um, but the mm -hmm. prosumer is tested to a durability and quality level for a homeowner, right? Yep. Well, and I, I will say just, you know, stuff for a week, but I did try the snow blower um, last winter. And I will say for battery equipment I've used, you guys have definitely upped the game on quality. Um, just like, I mean, the snow blower. I mean, it's, it's, it was very durable, like almost like a two stage gas snow thrower, except you put batteries in it instead of filled it with gas. I mean, it, it plugged through the snow. Well, like it was built well, felt good to use. Um, I think that's one of the different differentiating factors that I've seen even at equip with, uh, Crest and some of the, some of the other brands. I mean, it's just the quality, like the, the push mower you guys have, you, you put uh, an all steel deck on it. Like it's got the durability and power of, of a gas mower, but you, you're using battery power. You don't have to change the oil. You don't have to do any of that. So I think it's a real game changer for people who don't want to mess around with that, but they still want nice equipment that works well um, and has the power. Uh, so people like you and me. So I think yeah. that's definitely a nice option to have especially in the yeah. DIY market. Yeah. The one, I mean, even to, to put it a different way, right. The, the prosumer line is made for you and I for one use once or twice a week. Right. The commercial mm -hmm. line is meant to be used every day of the week. Yep. 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 Absolutely. And you got a nice range. The only thing I wish you guys had though, was an edger for the prosumer line. So hopefully you can work on, some, on that. That's something I use a lot of, uh, <laughs> yeah, we've got but, the attachment capable that's coming out that you can get an edger attachment on. We just don't have a dedicated edger to it yet. Yep, yep. Yeah, I will say, I, I think I, I have the the 850 CFM blower, which is really nice. Yeah. 
really that's like a beast. that. <laughs> that thing's got some power. I like how you guys have on the blower how you can adjust the chute from um, in and out, so you can go yeah, so volume, volume to speed to miles per hour. Yeah, that was a neat feature. Like I've honestly, I've been, I haven't even had this stuff a week yet, but I've been playing around with it, mowed the yard a couple times. The mower was great. I, I really liked that. Um, did a great job on thick, tall grass. So it was really nice. Um, and the only other thing I haven't used yet was the chainsaw. So got to find some wood to cut, but I'm like, it's very, wait, wait till you feel the chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, I could tell just by picking it up, like it's, it's very well built, very yeah. nicely made. I love the easy on and off to adjust, put the chain on. Like it's got the nice, um, easy on and off. You don't need a wrench to, to mess around with that. But I also like the battery. So I will say I have the snow blower, um, how that 60 volt battery goes into all this equipment. So it makes it easier to, you know, keep things charged where you're not going to have downtime. So now I have several batteries that I can keep things running all the time. So me as a homeowner, if I forget to charge the battery one time, I'm not going to go out there to mow the yard and be like, oh, crap, I can't do it because the batteries are dead. I think that's right. from what I hear when I post content, that's the biggest fear i think that people have is like well what am i going to do when the battery is dead and it's like well i think companies like like crest have really upped their game on not only the quality of the battery like i was able to mow my entire yard on one single charge and then the batteries in that dual charge you guys have charge up in in less than an hour so yeah. i was able to charge two five amp hour batteries faster then I was able to charge a two and a half amp hour battery from another piece of equipment I had from somebody else. So it just shows like it's it's the battery technology, I think, is what differentiates you guys um, from other stuff I've used, in my opinion. Yeah, I appreciate that. Right. It's again, what we're trying to do is, I mean, let, let's face it, Crest wasn't first to market. Right. <laughs> never claim that. Never, never will play that. But what we did have the opportunity to do is stop and ask questions of, you know, uh, people that are using it from a 60 volt standpoint for around the house and then learn more from the professional landscapers of, you know, what they were looking for. Um, so we had the ability to take our time and provide product that was really designed from research, right? Mm -hmm. What do you like about what you have? Or what would you change about what you have? Um, and then even from a charging option, you know, what are your frustrations? How do you overcome them? What would you like to do? And and that's really where it all begins is, is the product research aspect of, and that's the fun part for me is, is learning, you know, Justin, somebody like yourself, what you're looking for, what don't mm -hmm. you like, what do you like, what would you change? How would you change it? Why would you change it? Like, why isn't it working? Um, you know, professional landscapers, the same thing is, you know, yeah. why haven't you converted from gas to cordless? What's holding you back? What don't you trust? Why don't you trust it? Like, what does it, does it need to look, feel, perform? What are you waiting for? Right. Those are the fun conversations to have to me. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think the biggest thing that I've, I think that I noticed based on your setup at equip was the, the, the cyber tank that you can mount on your trailer or whatever, keep those batteries yeah. charged during the day. Cause I've heard a lot of people feedback that say like, Hey, what do I do when the batteries die and I'm out in the field kind of thing? And yep. with the eight minute charge time, you guys kind of eliminated the, it's going to take, take forever to charge the batteries. I might as well use gas. And that's a big technology. I think that is going to be a game changer in the future. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so you kind of going down that path, right? If, if you're a two person crew and you're using standard lithium ion batteries, right? Again, we are standard lithium ion as well. We have that yep. available, yep. but if you had a two person crew, like we were just talking about, if you had a string trimmer, an edger, a backpack blower, a 21 inch mower, and a pole hedge trimmer that you're using, right? So pole hedge trimmer, you're not using every day. I, I understand that. But the other ones you're using every single day, right? To get through a day, depending on how many lawns you're doing, you need anywhere from between 25 and 35 batteries, right? At minimum, charge before you go out the door, use those all up, and then charge them again at night, right? Mm-hmm. The Crest, that same group of products, you need four batteries because you have the cyber tank that's with you to charge them during the day, right? So your upfront investment yep. cost is a little bit lower in batteries. You don't need to carry as many batteries. 
right? You don't have to worry about charging all of them overnight or having infrastructure inside your home or your facility to charge them overnight because you have the cyber tank with you at all times, right? And that's one of the biggest advantages of, of the savings, right? The product is, is mm -hmm. the product, but when you come down to looking at the ROI, it truly comes down to the investment that you make today over the next six years, you're buying your fuel, right? Mm -hmm. So the ROI that we have, if we take national averages across the across the U.S., if you lease our, our cyber set or for a two-person crew or a three-person crew, you can start saving $2,000 per year per crew if you lease it for five years, right? Um, so mm -hmm. we offer a leasing program. We offer a rental program, right? We're trying to break down those barriers for landscapers that have just started to think about cordless, switching from gas to cordless. We're trying to take those barriers out of the way, that barrier of cost, the, the barrier of entry. Does it look, act, and perform like everything we do, right? Um, so we want those barriers to be broken down to give them a reason to convert, right? To help them understand that there is a system out there that is truly just built for them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, next question here. Do you think the Crest will offer the 46 CM mower in North America? Um, I'm not sure I'm familiar with what that is, but maybe you know. Yeah, so it's a, uh, in Europe, we offer a 17-inch mower versus a 21 inch okay. mower um it's very popular in in europe uh on the on the commercial and the prosumer side um in north america we tend to follow a little bit longer in bringing it over here because the demand isn't as high for that type of deck right so okay. i won't say that yeah. we won't offer it um we're just it's going to be a little bit longer before we get over here because 21 inch deck is the most popular size both on the prosumer side as well as on the commercial side yeah yeah um do you guys have any plans of maybe developing a bigger push mower deck either commercial or prosumer line um because i know i know that other there's bigger push mowers out there i've seen it from other battery brands as well any plans for that in the future um something bigger for somebody with a larger yard but still wants to push mow yeah absolutely yeah we're we're developing we're just in developing stages of a of a larger deck mower right we're focused on that 30 inch size um and whether it's, it it'll be more focused on the professional side of the business and really it's before the, because of the efficiency of that deck size right you can use it for yeah. smaller properties but you can get through a gate with it to do backyards um, so we know that's kind of the next evolution for the professional landscaper is that 30 inch deck. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, cause I, I run a 30 inch deck and I'm just a regular Joe, uh, that does stuff at home, but it definitely saves me a lot of time. And, um, I think that that, that's definitely going to be a great, uh, way to move towards, um, especially for that prosumer market, the people who like bigger equipment or better equipment um and want something bigger that has that battery power i think that's definitely a a good way to move towards for sure yeah absolutely yeah i mean it so it it takes a little bit for well i'll say it takes a little bit the 30 inch deck is for us a unique design i won't say for everybody for for us it's a unique design so again we're taking our time to make sure we bring a 30 inch deck that is appealing to the landscapers right again making sure that we're focused on what they're looking for um and answering questions that some may not answer today because if we just come with the same thing that everybody else has again 30 uh -huh. inch deck yeah if it's too heavy if it doesn't turn if it doesn't cut right it's not going to be the right thing for anybody so we want to do the due diligence and truly understanding what and if any, what frustrations are out there today with current 30 inch decks to yeah. see what we can do to improve upon it. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that approach. Um, that's awesome. 
The only thing I would recommend from my point of view that I've found so far is striping. Make it get us make something stripe uh, for a push mower. That'd be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> make yeah. a built in a built in striping thing. But hey, like I said, I use that. Honestly, we've been hammered with rain here. I don't know what part of the country you're in, but I'm in I'm in Indiana. We've gotten probably about seven inches in the last thirty days of rain. So oh, it's wow. been tough to get out on in the grass, and the grass has been growing like crazy. So when yeah. I mowed it, I mowed it probably four inches with the uh, push mower, and I was like, "Well, this will be the ultimate test for this thing." Chugged right through it, like it cut as good to be expected for that tall and thick of grass. It was dry when I cut it, but I yeah. was really impressed with just a the batteries made it through my whole seventy five hundred square foot yard. Uh, with the terrain I have, hills, um, running that self-propel. And I liked how light it was compared, I guess that's my other my other thing to point out, how light the mower was compared to gas mowers. Yeah. Uh, just that there were a lot of the times I didn't even have to use the self-propel. I just pushed the thing because it was so light. There's no engine on it. Um, so that was that was awesome. So I can't I can't wait to use it, you know, the rest of the season and and see how it plays out in the yard for sure. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, other day, so um, we have a neighbor, uh, well, my neighbor, so not a neighbor. My neighbor has been a, uh, has had, he needs somebody to help take care of his yard. So, unfortunately, I hadn't had a chance to get out there. So, his yard hadn't been mowed for the entire spring season yet. So, I put the um, prosumer mower up on seven, right, and put a five amp hour battery and just went to town. So I had neighbors coming by asking me what type of mower I was using. <laughs> how could it get through? Cause like they didn't hear any noise. It was quiet. Yeah. Um, so it did, it powered right through it. Super um, quiet. So now I've got to go back this week and knock it down a little <laughs> bit more because it's still a little high. Um, but it was fun to watch it go through. I mean, there's, you can imagine if it hasn't been, you know, we've got some pretty good rain here in Charlotte. Uh, maybe not as much as you have, but we've gotten some pretty good rain, but there were patches in there that were just, thick and dense um, yeah. and it powers right through it it doesn't have any issues with it whatsoever even at that tall it was probably it was still probably sticking up six inches above the deck itself trying to motor through it and it had no issues at all and i'll, I'll now that you brought that up i will say that's the one thing that i thought was super cool about that mower is just the height range i think it ranged from you said seven it did go up that's the highest i've seen a push mower go up yeah and I think it went yeah. down to, is it an inch or two inches? I don't know. The remember. one, one inch. One. Yeah. So the one yeah. to seven inch range, because a lot of them, like push mowers I've used, haven't had that range to mow extremely tall. Um, and I like that you guys incorporated the side discharge on the push mower, because I've seen a lot of companies going away from that. Because um, when you get into really tall grass like that, mulching just really isn't helpful at that point. Yeah, no, I just put the side discharge chute on and let it fly out. I, there was uh -huh. no way I could mulch that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Which you're kind of limited in that scenario if you don't have that option. Which a lot yeah. of I've seen a lot of them coming out like that, and it's it's kind of just you know head scratching on why they do that. But yeah, um, hey, there was a I saw a question that popped up from somebody about sixty volt, and I didn't know whether it was prosumer or commercial. I don't think I answered it. I didn't. I don't know if there was a history. Yeah, there or it, was, not. it was this one. I don't think you guys have an eighty volt, do you? So what's different about 60 volt and 80 volt and does having more make it better? Oh, okay. So it, it, yeah, so it's a good question. Um, here's the answer, and you can take it for, for what it's worth. Having 80 volt doesn't mean it's, it's better than anything else you have. 80 volt just means it's more power, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look at cordless product, the, the perception is, and there's some reality to it as well. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to back down from it. The higher the voltage, the more power you have, okay? Then your runtime becomes your amp hour. It's your gas tank, right? So the higher your amp hour, the longer your runtime you have, okay? Um, the difference is, is when you're looking at it, um, the reason I say 80 volt does, is, doesn't necessarily mean it's always better um, is because if you look at watt hours, which is just simply the amp hour times the voltage, depending on what I'm buying, I might be able to get more runtime out of a 60 volt, five amp hour product than I can an 80 volt, two amp hour product, right? Mm -hmm. I'd have 300 watt hours versus 160 watt hours. 
Um, the other part of it too is again, 80 volt perception is it's more power, but it's also going to be heavier, right? So you really have to take into account what works better for you, right? Um, in most cases, 80 volt is, I'll say it for me, like I'm from a homeowner standpoint, 80 volts heavy for me to use as a string trimmer um, or as an edger or as a hedge trimmer or as a chainsaw, right? Chainsaw is a little bit different because mostly you're going to cut down, you know, cutting up firewood or whatever, um, not really cutting a tree down with it. Um, you know, if you're on a mower with 80 volt, okay, you're pushing it around, not that big of a deal. But for handheld product, um, it, it's a heavy battery pack to be using for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. Right. From a professional landscaper standpoint, that's a heavy battery pack to be using for long periods of time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right. So, again, I, I won't I'm not going to say what's better. Look, we a Crest sells 60 volts. So I'm, you know, as a Crest representative, <laughs> I'll tell you Crest is better. Right. <laughs> but you have to make the right decision for you. You've got to find the right power, right, the right runtime, the type of yeah. yard that you're using, the applications, and then really weigh the weight, weigh the weight take into account the weight <laughs> of the product and how long you're yeah. going to be using it for. Um, and just make the best decision for you, right? Um, from a market standpoint, 60 volts been growing uh, very quickly over the past, call it three to four years. Um, mm -hmm. 80 volt has made an entrance into it. It's picked up some market share, but it's not growing leaps and bounds from at least the industry data that we have. Interesting. Yeah, and I guess I guess one more thing I want to touch on is if we could talk a little more about the um, the robotic technology because I I run a robotic mower here as well just to test. Um, it's not the Crest one, but I definitely have people who are interested in robotic the robotic technology. Yeah. So if you can kind of talk a little bit about the Crest robotic mower and kind of what what the features are of that, what differentiates it from other robots. Um, that might be absolutely as well. So if everybody wants to get their weekends back and not have to worry about going out and mowing their grass, buy a robotic mower, right? If you're a professional landscaper and you have golf courses and sports fields and you want to save labor costs and gas costs, buy a robotic mower. Um, and from a robotic mower standpoint, you can buy a lot of different ones. If you're going to buy one, buy one that has wireless technology, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to, the, Robotic mowers haven't taken off in the U.S. as quickly as they have in Europe, especially Germany, right? If you look at market penetration in Europe, they've got 16% market penetration of all lawnmowers. In the U.S., robotic lawnmowers are simply less than 1%. But the biggest reason is there's two big reasons. The first one is boundary wire. Mm -hmm. Not saying anything bad against boundary wire at all because it's a great technology that help launch robotic mowers globally. In the US, it's just been difficult because the, in, the time it takes to install the boundary wire and then maintenance of it. At some point, it's going to get um, split along that boundary wire and you have to go replace that piece of wire and the connectors. If you have your lawn aerated, it's guaranteed that that wire is gonna get hit by the right. aerator and yeah. you're basically gonna replace the boundary wire again all over, all over uh -huh. right? Yep. However, technology is now caught up with the second piece of it, which is in the U.S., we want stripes, right? We want a robot mm -hmm. that looks smart, right? Mm -hmm. we, don't want, we don't want one that kind of bounces around. And that's really where, if you look at indoor robotics, that's where indoor robotics started to take off quickly is when it started to have the appearance that it was vacuuming our house just like we would in patterns. So enter in Crest Robotics. So we've had Crest Robotics in Europe for the past three years, doing fantastic. We introduced wireless or Crest Mission Robotics uh, and Mega Robotics um, into, the, into the global market last year. It is using RTK, which is basically three points. So you have, you're using a satellite, you're using a antenna for your permanent location. That's that's where it's saying, I know where my, I am always, I know where I always am because I have this antenna that's permanently mounted. So I know where that location is. And then you've got the robot and those all three talk to each other to get you the best accuracy we can, which is two to three centimeters accuracy, right? The yes. nice part is we're using cellular technology. 
the cellular technology allows us to have an antenna stationed, you know, if it's a single antenna 10 miles away from your location, or if you're part of a network, it could be 40 miles away from your location, right? Um, but that cellular technology allows us to communicate with all three of those points to give us an advantage where we don't have to have an antenna on the property, right? Or if you're on the property and you have a building that you want the robot to mow behind, you'd have to have another antenna behind it because they're using a, a different type of signal, right? We're using yeah. cellular and there's also radio frequency that you can use, right? So if you're using radio, radio waves, it can be blocked by an object where cellular typically doesn't get blocked by an object, just like using your cell phone, mm -hmm. right? So with that, with it, because it always knows where it is, we're able to mow in patterns, right? So you can mow your pattern north, south, east, west, northeast to southeast, or northeast to southwest, whatever you want to do. Yeah. We also have the ability coming up in about a month to be able to do checkerboard patterns and um, uh, diamond patterns, right? Awesome. So now we have a wireless technology. The installation is super simple because we're using a mapping cart. So you can literally map your yard as fast as you want to walk. With that, because it's wireless, like you're showing here, if you want to go across yeah. a hard surface, you basically take that mapping cart, walk across the sidewalk to create a bridge to get to the next zone. Um, so it allows you to install the, the robot, get it up and running in a very, very quick amount of time. Now, it still takes some time, right? But you're not having to bury a wire. Yeah, and right. the mapping cart, like I said, you can install, you can put your map together just as quick as you can walk the property. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the other part that you're showing here is for landscapers or dealers that are out there that have sports fields or golf courses, we have a six acre unit and a nine acre unit. Perfect for helping to maintain golf courses and sports fields that are out there. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. And it's, and it looks like you can all phone control here apps to see yep. what your mode is doing. So, yeah. So everything's controlled through the app. Right. You can schedule it for daily. Um, you can schedule different zones on a daily basis. You can cut each zone at a different height if you want. Um, so it gives you all the control of your robot at the fingertips of using your app. Yeah. No, that's really cool technology. Um, absolutely. And I like that it's got the ability to, to do stripes and patterns and you can control which way it goes and that because a lot of them are pretty limited in that capacity i would say from what i've used yeah um, they're starting to come out with that technology but like i said i i saw this thing in person at equipment it's definitely a beefy unit very well built just like you guys's other stuff so it's it's a really nice piece of equipment especially that you can pair them together um and the ability i believe you can like if if you're a contractor you can drop these at certain properties like you mentioned earlier and let it mow and and come back and get it based on wherever your satellites are at um is that is that accurate or not so for this one for our for the robot mowers for the crest robot mowers you set them up per yard right okay. it's not the one that you want to pick up and take uh to a different yard it's meant to be uh you know a single yard mowing um okay. now the range that we have is everything from we just introduced a new one that uh, that came out this month so a quarter acre all the way up to a nine acre unit, right? So we've got everything to fit your property size or like we talked about sports fields, golf courses, those types of things as well. Um, but there are other robots that are out there that you can take from property to property. But again, you have to set a local antenna up at each property mm -hmm. every time you go out there. So okay. this one is a an antenna that's stationary. Okay. Um, and really to get the most out of it, we want that robot mower mowing all the time. So we do have landscapers that are out there that are that are taking a step forward and other businesses that are using robots as a service, hmm. right? They'll set it up, charge it, uh, excuse me, charge it. They'll quote it out to a, a resident or a golf course, and they'll basically map it out, set the unit up, um, and then come back and do the maintenance and check up on it. But they'll use it as a service. So when they go to the property the next time, instead of having to have somebody out on a mower, 
the property is always being mowed. Um, and then when you come back, you're literally just you're doing the string trimming, the blowing, the edging, and then you're off to the next property. Yeah. No, that's that's a no brainer. That's an awesome ability to have from that standpoint. Um, so, yeah, you guys, you pretty much got the commercial line to robotic options to the prosumer line. Prosumer line. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a really a, a wide range. And I think you cater to a, a, a wide range of people from people like me to people who do this every day as a contractor. So it's really a cool um, brand, cool products. And I think you guys are really going to make some waves here in the future. Um, yeah, in the market. No, we appreciate that. And just to, um, as we're talking through, I, hopefully there's yeah. some guys that are out there that are listening to us from a the professional standpoint, but take advantage of the 10 day free trial. Right. Yeah. Um, we understand that proof is in the pudding. We're not, we can say, Hey, we've got a really good product, but honestly, until you try it out and try for yourselves, that's when you determine whether what we're saying is true or not. Right. Um, yeah. the one thing that I'll, I'll say about Crest is we know we're not going to have all the answers, but where we are right now, we do feel we've got the only commercial battery system or the only battery system for commercial landscapers and really good product for prosumers to use as well. And then follow that, follow that back up and pair it with robotics. You really have different choices that you can go to business with to really help your company move forward um, mm -hmm. or look at it differently to make uh, money a different way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the other thing I want to mention here too, for people who are interested in the, the prosumer line, um, is the promo that Crest is running right now, the spring bonus event. I guess I'll just share it here. They've shared it. Yeah. Thank you for pulling that up. I was trying to find yeah. it quickly and I couldn't find <laughs> it out. So yeah, the, basically the spring bonus event that you guys are running, um, where you're basically, um, it looks like a free battery promotion on that stuff. Um, yeah, the details yeah. So it's are essentially, there. if you if you buy one of these tools or buy a combination, then we're also going to give you a free battery as well, right? Um, and it it's really focused on helping the prosumers. And, and I'll say it: look, take a chance, right? It's sixty volt product. It's well built. It's well designed. Um, it will do everything and anything you can ask it to do around your house right we do have landscapers that are using some of our prosumer products as well that the handheld blower that you see there we have a lot of commercial landscapers that are using a handheld blower because it's mm -hmm. 850 cfm yeah so they'll use it for blowing off sidewalks uh blowing off patio streets anything that they need um they'll use it some for leaf cleanup not much right because that's the backpack blower i understand that yeah but it's got plenty of power to clean off any hard surface uh, that they're doing from a commercial standpoint. And they, they just absolutely love it because of the power behind it. No, oh, absolutely. That, that blower is awesome. Um, from what I've used in the past, that thing has the power. So um, I think that's an awesome promotion too, especially with spring coming up and people getting out and looking to buy new lawn equipment. That's a great promo to take advantage of to where you could pick up an extra battery on, on some yeah. of that stuff and, and try it out and like i said i've been impressed with the the quality um so far and i'll be interested to use it this season and just see yeah how things go but it's been awesome yeah, for, so far. yeah so for one of the power-up event for the promos i, I kind of glanced over it and i apologize but if, if you're looking for a starter kit if you buy the 60 volt mower you get the string trimmer for free yeah yeah right yep so and then out of the ones that you saw there the string trimmer the chainsaw, the mower, the head trimmer. If you buy any of those, you get a free 2.5 amp hour battery. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that's a great we're giving deal. away. We're giving things away <laughs> now. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I guess one last question here before we wrap things up. Uh, I don't know if you want to speak to that. Sure. Uh, <laughs> a walk behind blower or leave vacuum. Oh, this is a great question. So we have talked about it. We absolutely have talked about it. Um, the The part that is difficult for both of those is the energy required, meaning we don't have a battery platform that would support runtime of those two units at the moment. 
So when I talked about the leaf blower, I talked about it's the biggest energy hog of any cordless product that we make today, right? Yeah. So now just imagine trying to suck leaves up with a cordless product as well in the volume that you need for runtime. So we are, we have talked about it. We are waiting for the right battery technology to be able to give consumers as well as professionals the runtime they would expect out of it. Right now, if you're a professional landscaper, the first question you're going to have, and I, well, if you've got eight minute cyber system, I'll just keep changing batteries in and out. <laughs> I'm with you and I agree with you, but I have to think of the application for it. Right. Mm -hmm. So the application is you're going to be out somewhere remote and that battery is going to run out and then you're going to have to walk back. Then you're going to use it. Then you are gonna have to walk back. Right. So that's what we need to take into account. The technology to to create it, design it is there, but the battery technology hasn't caught up to give us satisfactory runtime in any of the research that we've done. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, you're constantly running with a leaf blower. I mean, that's got to suck the power like nothing else. Um, yeah, yeah, those know. walk behind blowers, those <laughs> things are generating so much CFM and airspeed. Yeah. If we were to put a battery on it right now, you get two minutes of runtime. <laughs> right. right. Um, and if you make the battery even heavier, then you're just pushing more weight. Yeah. So yeah. you can do it. It's just you can't get the runtime out of it at the moment. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I think this has been a pretty good. Uh, I don't see any more questions, but um, it'll be a good little reference for people too to check back on here on YouTube if they want more um, background on Crest. I think I really appreciate you joining us and uh, we're almost at the hour here, so I think we can wrap things up. But this has been really awesome to kind of go over straight from the source and get information on the company and and kind of the the information behind the technology that you guys got. So I really appreciate you joining us and going over that. No, oh, absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So if you guys have any other questions after this stream, just drop them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. Um, but we'll leave this up and, uh, you guys can reference back to it, but I appreciate everybody that joined in and everybody that catches the replay. Once again, Todd, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great rest of your night. Um, and, uh, hopefully this is helpful to other people down the road. Yeah. Enjoyed it. Thank you, Justin. All right. Thank you. All right. Take care. Good night,